Hello, Conscious Investor, and welcome back. I'm your host, Julie Hawley. For over four years, I've paired my background in real estate investing, education, and coaching to create powerful content for you each week. This podcast is where we take a holistic approach to investing by focusing on three ingredients to a life of personal freedom, health, mindset, and wealth. We'll talk about everything from passive investing through syndication and how to use your retirement accounts to boost your investing, to mineral balancing and gut brain health, and into topics that cultivate your inner strength and resilience so you can thrive regardless of any of life's current events. And yes, those are all episodes currently available and linked in the show notes below. Join me each Monday for a mindset episode and later in the week for an interview with expert investors and health professionals so that you can experience your greatest health, strongest mindset, and build the wisest wealth. Dixon, I am so excited to have you here on The Conscious Investor. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. You know, I love the topic of conversation we're going to dive into, but before we dive into it, I have to start with the question and conscious investor, you know what that question is. So you can say it out loud in your car on the treadmill. I mean, someone might look at you weird, but whatever, and just say, you know, like, okay, what do you do? And how did you get started? Yeah. What do I do? So I run marketing for a company called Monetary Metals. And very briefly, Monetary Metals is a gold investment company. We deliver a yield on gold, paid in gold, to individual investors and institutions. And the way we do that is by financing qualified businesses in the gold-using industry or gold-producing industry. Um, How did I get started? I, I got kind of my first real job, if you will working at a small precious metals commodity shop in New York City. And I was just kind of a traditional precious metal broker. I was on the phone, you know, all day, every day, taking orders, placing orders. And as I got my start in that industry, like with anything else, when you get started in something, you want to understand it. You want to kind of figure out how does this industry work? You know, what makes it move? What, you know, why do people do what they do? Just, just get a, a, a general sense of, of how things work. Um, and in the process of that, I read a lot online and I discovered a, a precious metals blog. And the name of that blog at that time was called The Last Contango Report. And that probably means nothing to to most of your listeners, but that's what it was called. It was called the Last Contango Report. Contango is a is a market struck. Do you know Contango? Okay, you no, know Contango. that's why I was like oh. that. Ha- I was going to ask because I'm like that has to mean something. <laughs> yes, Contango is a is a market structure phenomenon uh, relative to it's a commodity um, a commodity markets term, and it refers to when you. Um, when you've got a, a, a positive sloping curve in the futures market relative to spot. So you can buy metal in the present and sell a future a hedge against it, a futures contract against it, and there's a positive uh, spread. That's contango. The reverse of that is backwardation. And um, that's when you get a negative spread. And um, so it's 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 highly niche and highly uh, kind of uh, um, you know uh, technical terms related to the precious metal precious metals markets or really commodity markets in general. Anyway, the name of this blog was called the Last Contango Report, and on this blog, I started getting answers to my questions. I just the the author who's now the man I work for. His name's Keith Weiner. He's the CEO of Monetary Metals. He just, he just um, clearly explained market structure, market dynamics, how, um, yeah, how precious metals markets worked. And I just soaked it all up like a sponge. I just started reading every single thing that he wrote. And that um, eventually led to me reaching out to meet him in person. Uh, met him. We, you know, we tried to 
we tried to work on a few deals together while I was at this previous company. Those didn't quite pan out. Um, but because they didn't pan out, I actually ended up joining him full time uh, about three and a half years after I started that role. So that is the answer to your question. I may, I may actually win the award for the longest answer to that question. Hopefully not. But um, that is that is the answer. No, I don't think so. Actually, I, I think okay. that I have some some longer stories, and that's okay. and it's fine because the reality is that everyone likes to know the through line. We all like to know the background. We were talking about superheroes off air because that's fun, and you know we all like to know the background of of the characters of you know stories that we like to follow. So it's it's always nice to know like how did you get there, and that's really fascinating um, that you discovered his work that you were inspired by his work, that it was providing solutions for you, and then that you took the step to reach out to him. I normally don't go down this part of the rabbit hole, but I am so curious, like, what was it that allowed you that you're like, was it this, I have to reach out to this person, or I'm curious to reach out to this person? Like, what was the impetus for you to reach out to him? Wow. Yeah. I don't, it's, I really have to travel back in time here. We're getting close to, you know, almost 10, nine, 10 years ago. But um, I, if I, if I remember correctly, I think really what it was, was just, I was, I was really captivated and fascinated by the ideas. Um, his, you know, position and his articles and his insights were really counter to the industry at that time. He had a very different approach, a different take um, on, on you know, what drives precious metals uh, markets and prices and you know, why people buy and why people sell. And it was, it was all very new and fresh to me. And I think the, the, the reason why I, I reached out really was to kind of meet the man behind the screen, if you will, behind the articles. And I think also if if I I think I, I reached out so that I could interview him for an article on on our website because I thought I just thought his ideas were good enough that I wanted to kind of introduce him to you know to a broader audience where I was where I was working at that time and um, yeah I mean it's 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 funny it it began really as just a kind of a desire and a thirst for knowledge and a, and a, and a, and a desire to understand, you know, the industry that I was, that I was working in. And it, it resulted in me, you know, going to work for him. He, he rebranded, obviously he rebranded the, the website, the, you know, if you, if you Google the last contango report today, you won't find anything. It's now, you know, monetarymetals.com. And, you know, you know, we do what we do, as I said before, and been doing it for a while. And, it's been, it's been quite a journey. So, yeah. Okay. I have one more question about this origin story that I think <laughs> is actually really foundational to, to what we're going to ultimately discuss, which is, you know, investing through precious metals. Um, and so what's interesting is that a lot of times people engage, they find themselves um, with new information that they haven't seen before that seems contrarian. It's saying, I'm going to, I'm approaching this in a completely different way. And a lot of times people don't know what to do with that. And mm -hmm. so people are trying to discern, okay, do I invest in that apartment syndication or do I stay with single family homes? Do I invest with that group or this group? Do I try this new strategy or do I not? And so people are trying to discern now you have extensive knowledge already of the precious metals industry and you were already involved in it when you're looking when you were looking at the last contango report i literally have to look down conscious investor if you're listening to make sure i say that correctly but it as you were reviewing that information and and you're having that kind of awareness and say, wait, wait, this, somebody is doing something different. They're saying it differently and they're not positioned like everyone else in the room. What gave you that discernment um, to say, wait a second, this, this is actually the path. This is the way this is solid. And I want to pursue this 
despite all the other noise in the world. Yeah, that is a, that's a, that's a big question. It is. I, I'm burdening will, you with that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best. I will do my best to answer it. The first, the first idea that comes to mind as a partial answer is, <clears throat> you know, as I said before, I was, when I joined, I had some base level of understanding, but, but, but desired more. And the standard fare of people I were, I was reading at the time, you know, very respected, you know, successful people. Um, but as I was kind of reading their analysis, there was just, there was just something nagging, like, okay, this explains some things and there's obviously something attractive about what they're saying, but it, it didn't quite answer all the questions that I had. And um, so I think there's, there's just a, I think we all kind of have an intuition, maybe an internal voice that if we listen to it is a clue or uh, a hint as to whether we're on the right trail or not, right? Like, um, some of my questions were getting answered, but there were also some pretty big holes too. And eventually when I, when I found Keith, he was, he was able to really fill those gaps and provide solid answers to those questions. So, um, but, but had I, had I kind of taken the, well, I guess that's good enough for today, even though I have these doubts, I'm just going to silence them and kind of move on. I don't think, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't have kept reading and kept exploring. So, there is a yeah. There's there's an internal voice. I think um, if 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 <laughs> if you're already a truth seeking individual, then uh, I think that that voice is easier to listen to. Uh, but I actually think all of us kind of have that. I think all of us um, have that voice inside of us. So that's that would be one thing. The second thing was his. And this really gets kind of to the core of the business. But the second thing that really, um, I think, what did you say that really was was a driver for like why I wanted to make that change or like why I wanted to to transition to to monetary metals? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think I think the second thing is his ideas were highly innovative. Uh, particularly around the idea of gold can deliver a yield, that there's there's actually there are mechanisms where you can own gold and and actually earn a return on your gold. That you know traditionally financial markets, financial analysis, kind of the common understanding is that that is not possible but he was able to show convincingly that it is possible and actually had a plan to, to deliver it. And having worked in the, you know, having kind of gotten my start in the industry and, you know, had countless phone calls with investors about why they should buy gold and constantly running up against that objection. Well, there's no yield. I can't earn a yield. Like I'm just, and in fact, it's negative. It's a negative yield. I have to pay storage costs to own it, um, to be able to overcome that, you know, to overcome that objective. I thought that was a very compelling and attractive and innovative opportunity. And, you know, it's a, it's a old and tired and worn out saying, but you want to kind of skate to where the puck is going. And I thought, you know, this, this idea really had, had some substance to it. So that's, that's why I joined. That's so interesting. And I, I appreciate your, your willingness, you know, just to allow me to go down that rabbit hole because what you, what you are doing at monetary metals is very different than anything else that I have seen out there. And so I think that, you know, for your sake, conscious investor, it's good to hear some of these maybe tougher, deeper questions, you know, being, you know, extracting out some of the thinking behind it, because um, this is really, ex it's exciting. And um, this is why I wanted to invite, this is why I invited you to the show, because it's like, 
Okay, I haven't heard and seen any, I haven't seen anything like this out there before, and it's very fascinating. So let's go ahead and transition and dive into, you know, how are, how is monetary metals able to achieve a yield on precious metals? Yes, yes. This is the question we get asked more than anything else. And it's, it's, it's where, you know, it's kind of where the magic happens. So the way we deliver a yield on gold, and we also do it in silver, is our business, we are a marketplace business, and we're really connecting two different markets together. On the one side, we have, you know, individual investors, we have institutions, they, they own gold, they already have gold and silver, and they are interested in earning a yield on it. On the other side, we have businesses in the precious metal space, in the precious metals industry. And these are companies that are working with physical metal. So mints, miners, refiners, jewelry companies, bullion dealers, manufacturers, anyone who's, you know, uses gold, holds gold as inventory or has working capital tied up in gold, they need to finance that part of their business, right? Um, all businesses have to finance their inventory. All businesses have to finance themselves, period, right? You know, you got to pay <laughs> for the business to operate, right? So the, the question then is, how do these gold companies finance themselves? Well, they've got a number of options. They can use, you know, equity capital. They can use debt capital. They can, um, you know, they can kind of um, self-fund, right? They don't have to raise outside equity. But the, the problem with financing a gold business or financing a, a business that uses gold as inventory is that gold's price is volatile. Price of gold you know, can move up and down and it can move significantly in a short amount of time. So if you're working with gold inventory and you have to finance that inventory to sell your product, to, to, to operate your business, if you're buying gold at, you know, $2,000 an ounce and then it, let's say it takes you 30 days to move that gold through your business, you're turning raw gold into jewelry, you're turning raw gold into coins, whatever it is you're doing as a business. So you're buying it at $2,000 an ounce and 30 days later when it's time to sell it, that price is now $1,000 an ounce. You've got a big problem, right? That's, that's all coming out of your margin. So gold, you know, businesses in the gold industry have to hedge their gold price exposure. They can do that through the futures market. That's kind of the conventional way is to buy the inventory and then sell a corresponding futures contract against it. So that kind of zeros out your price risk. However, operating in the futures markets comes with all sorts of risks and complexities. It requires additional capital. It uses margin. If you, you know, get that hedge wrong, it could blow up for you in a very serious way. And one thing I always remind people is that, you know, if you're a jewelry company, if you're a, a, a mint, if you're one of these, you know, operators um, of a company in the gold industry, running a futures book, running a hedge book is likely not your core competency. You're probably going to have to outsource that. And now we're talking more fees, you know, more, more expense, more cost. So that's that's the conven conventional way they handle gold's price volatility. However, there's another way. And the other way is they can just lease the metal they need for their business. So it's a precious metals lease. It's a gold lease. It's a silver lease. And that is where we come in. That's where monetary metals comes in. We are a lease capital provider to the precious metal industry. Let's say you know, you're know you making jewelry and you know you need 3,000 ounces of gold to make your jewelry. We can lease that metal to you because we've got clients who have that metal who want to earn a return. They're happy to lease it to you for a rate, 
a rate of return. We make a small percentage of that rate. That's how we make our money. That's where our revenue comes from. The business gets the gold they need for their business without any price risk because title and ownership of the gold remains with the clients. So the business gets the metal they need to operate their business. Our clients get a return on their metal. We make a little money bringing those two markets together and everybody wins. So that's how we're able to deliver the yield. It's through a it's through a lease financing vehicle to precious metals companies. Okay, it just st still boggles my mind. And you know, I'm like, I've I've spoken with you before this, so I'm always still just wrapping my mind around this. Yes. Let me see if I let's do a little check for understanding and see how Julie's tracking along here. <laughs> And I want to do this in an equivalent since, you know, I transact in the real estate space all the time. This would be in my mind. I'm thinking I own a house at 123 Main Street mm -hmm. and that house is sitting there vacant and I don't want it sitting there vacant because I'm having to pay taxes and I'm having to maybe pay some utility bills to, you know, make sure it's, it's you know, I'm not having any issues, you know, with plumbing. Et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm, it's actually a negative, a net negative in my investment portfolio. So I am similar to these owners, these people who own gold, they own their gold and they're paying storage fees and they're like, Hmm, okay. I want this because we should own precious metals as a hedge against inflation. And it should be part of our investment portfolio. They're like, this is actually a net negative in my life to some extent as well. But I can go over to my friend Dixon at Monetary Metals and he can essentially find somebody that is going to write a contract. He's going to write a contract and they're going to lease it similar to some putting a, rent, a resident into the single family house on 123 Main Street. And so now it's, but this precious metal is just simply getting leased out to you know, our jeweler or the bullion dealer or so many different people. I mean, am I tracking with it? I mean, is it really that? It, Cause it seems so simple when I think about it like that, it seems really simple, but it's like out of context. I'm like, wait, we precious metals. Wait, what? No, no, I, I was say, yeah, no, I would say, well, I would say what you just said is accurate. That that's absolutely right. Um, and in, in, it, in, in, in one way, it really is that simple. Um, you know, leasing of precious metals, I don't think that's a, a, a mental category that most people have, but leasing of a real estate asset, an apartment, a house, that's, I mean, obviously that's something that most people have an understanding about. What, what, they've been on either side of it, right? They have an apartment that they rented themselves or they, you know, have uh, a real estate portfolio that they are in rental income on. So, but at the end of the day, it's it 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 is the same transaction that's taking place. You own an asset. There is a qualified person or 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 entity that wants to use the asset that you own and is willing to pay you a, a rental fee to use it. That's that that really is it. Wow. Okay, this is really fascinating. So let's go further down this rabbit hole of understanding. Um, I have, we know, we know, uh, that my son will love silver. He's got his little small silver collection and he, let's just say, let's say it's enough. You have a minimum investment. So what is the minimum that he would have to have? We'll use him as a. Yeah. The, the minimum to open an account is 10 ounces of gold or whatever the dollar or silver equivalent of that is we do silver. Um, so right now it's, it's Thursday, April 4th, and I believe gold is trading around $2,200. So call it 22 K is, is the dollar equivalent, but it's, it's really 10 ounces of gold. Yeah. Okay. So he has that 10 ounces of gold. He's got some rounds and I don't know, little tiny bars, I'm trying to learn this world conscious investor. <laughs> and so, so you're doing, has, you're doing great. Everything you said is, 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 is following. Yeah. 
okay. rounds, rounds are a real product, rounds, bars, and coins, yeah. Okay, awesome. So he's got these these rounds and he and, and the and some bars and such and he is like, "Okay, I've got the 10 ounces necessary. Now what does he do?" Because yeah. he, he can't just keep that so going back to our our idea with 123 Main Street, the leasee is going to come in. They're actually going to move in and they're going to occupy the physical the physical structure. So yes. what's the equivalent when we're thinking about the precious metals? Owner has a precious metals, but somebody wants to lease those precious metals. Are they actually, and I think I know the answer to this question, but are they actually leasing the physical like, oh, I just took these and I shipped them off too, you know? Sure. Well, no, this is, this is a really good question. And I think this, this you know, We've we've kind of covered the high level, so now it's time to to go a few layers down and and get into some of the some of the mechanics and nuances. So, just just going back to your example, he's he's got ten ounces, so he wants to open an account. The first thing I would say is he can use metal that he already owns. So as long as it's 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 you know bullion products, coins, rounds, bars, uh, we will actually provide him a complimentary. Um, prepaid shipping label, and it's uh, it's fully insured, so he can actually ship that metal to one of the vault partners that we work with. So he can use metal he already owns. He doesn't have to. Um, you can fund an account with dollars, so you could just wire, you know, twenty two thousand, buy that ten ounces through us, and that that also gets you started in an account. Well, it is. Yeah, yes, yeah. so you don't have to have the gold to open an account. You can just buy gold through us. Uh, and we, we sell that gold at less than 1% over spot. So we, okay. Um, okay. we make it very affordable to, to get started if you want to go that route. Either way, though, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I know, conscious investor, you're listening. I literally put my hand up, my finger up because I'm like, <laughs> wait, I'm, a, I'm aware of spot only because of my oh, son's. Yes love of precious metals. So why don't we just briefly touch on what spot is? <laughs> yes, yes. So the spot price, again, industry term, it's just the price of physical gold and sil uh, silver sold today at this moment. It's it's what it costs to buy metal, you know, right now. It's it's the price that you would see, you know, at the bottom of the TV screen on Bloomberg, you know, quoted that's that's scrolling across there. That's the spot price. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So whether you're shipping metal in or whether you're buying it, if you open a monetary metals account, what you're starting off with day one is a gold or silver balance. You own physical gold that is vaulted and insured in a secure depository. So it's physical gold in a secure um, vault institution and it's fully insured. The next, you know, the next step is you decide which leases you want to put your metal in. So we offer a number of different leases. Each lease is a different company. It's a different opportunity. It has a different rate of return because no two companies are the same. No two leases are the same. And you're actually going to, you know, choose in your client account, in your online client portal, which leases you want to participate in. Now we provide you with all the information you would need to make an educated decision. So that includes who these companies are, how they're using the metal, what the rate of return is, what's the duration of the lease, what risks we've identified, and the steps that we've taken to mitigate those risks. So going back to your example, just kind of, I want to get into the, like the mechanics of the lease, right? Because while while a lease transaction is, you know, you can lease a, an apartment and you can lease gold. Gold and an apartment are not the same thing, right? I mean, it's you know that we are we are dealing with two different assets here. So, a a precious metals lease or a gold lease, mechanically, how it works with us is, I think the first thing to say is, you know, we have a ten ounce account minimum, but we are not doing ten ounce leases. We're doing thousand, you know, we're you know, we're doing leases at you know three thousand, four thousand, five thousand ounces a clip, and that's because we're working with 
companies who have a financing need, right? We're working with an, a refiner who is one of the largest, uh, second largest refiner by capacity in the world. They're an LBMA accredited refiner. LBMA just means London Bullion Market Association. It's, a, it's an industry term. So they need quite a bit of gold. If, uh, you know, Ryan showed up at uh, this refiner's door and said, here's my 10 ounces, uh, I'd like to lease it to you. He's, he's, uh, he's not gonna get anywhere with that, right? So, so we as an intermediary have to aggregate, you know, all the 10 ounce accounts into one big pile and then negotiate the deal, negotiate the lease with that company who needs the financing. So what that means is um, when we when we build those deals, so we source, originate, vet, qualify, build these leases, and then offer them to our clients, and then we monitor them continuously to ensure performance. But but all of that kind of happens behind the scenes. All you see is here are the opportunities, and which ones do I want to participate in? Your gold, when it goes on lease it leaves the vault, it changes form, it has to change form to the kind of gold that the lessee needs in their business. So that's gonna change depending on if it's a jewelry company, if it's a refiner, they need different types of gold. The beautiful thing about gold is it's fungible. It can exist in many different forms with high precision. We know exactly you know, how much gold is in 18 karat jewelry or 24 karat jewelry. And, and similar to other kind of raw gold products, we can track and see and kind of point to physically where all that gold is. So you as a client, you retain title and ownership of your gold, but you are giving up form and possession in a lease in exchange for a rate of return, right? So your goal is going to change form. It's going to go out of the vault. And I guess the last component I would say is you're giving up form, possession, and liquidity or duration because all of these lease opportunities have a, uh, a duration, right? They're one-year leases. They're six-month leases. They're nine-year leases. So you're saying you can have my gold. The form can change for six months in exchange for more gold. You know, I, we, you know, you're earning a rate of return on your gold that's paid in in more ounces of gold. Did that answer your question? It very much answers my question. And it's so fascinating. Okay, so that last part right there was really interesting because I mean, it's, it's so it feels so primitive, like that. And that's funny to say, right? Because we're used to transacting with, well, now people are using credit cards all the time, classic. Sure. But, you know, when we were kids, we were transacting with dollar bills and our coins and things like that. And so we were transacting at the stores in like kind. And so this is really similar. You, We have gold and we are sending that gold off to, you know, to fund this. Um, and then they are sending, they're not paying us back in uh dollars nickels pennies quarters they're paying us back with gold so it's like right. Kind, right there it's exact same thing transacting both ways just like i hand you a hundred dollar bill and say hey you know what dixon can you break this for me i need some salt smaller bills to you know hand off to my my kids that's no that's exactly right and it's 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 a really critical component to understand because another question we get asked a lot is, you know, um, I, I think everyone just kind of assumes for reasons you already mentioned that they're going to earn dollars on their gold. Like, okay, they'll own 10 ounces of gold, they'll lease it out, and they're going to get some kind of dollars in exchange. But that's not how it works. Everything we do, when we, when we build these leases, uh, the terms of the lease themselves are denominated in gold. So we, you know, we owe the company an amount of gold and they owe us and, and we owe our clients a return on the gold, right? The fee is paid in gold. So when you, when you have an account and when you put your, your gold on a lease, let's say the interest rate, just, just to make the math easy, let's say it's a hundred ounce account, 
100 ounces of gold, and you're earning you know, 4% annually in a lease. So you've got 100 ounces in that lease, the, the annualized rate is 4%. That means that over that 12 month term, you're gonna get monthly payments of gold in your account. And at the end of that lease, you will have 104 ounces total. Now the dollar price of gold, it's gonna do whatever, whatever it's gonna it do. It's gonna go, yeah, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go sideways. I mean, it's been going up recently, but trust me, I've been in the industry long enough to, it, it does in fact go down sometimes. Um, so, so, but the point is over that investment holding period, the dollar price of gold is going to move. We don't have any control over that. It doesn't, you know, have any bearing or impact on the lease performance because the lease, again, denominated in gold and paid in gold. So what you're getting as a client, you're getting more gold on your gold. Your ounces, your total ounces are growing over time. I, I, I like to tell clients that I speak to directly, I like to put it this way, which is like, look, at the end of our relationship together, whatever, however long you are a client of monetary metals, what is the one thing that we are promising you? We are promising you that at the end of your relationship with us, you will have more ounces than when you started. I can't promise you that the dollar price of gold is going to go up. If anyone is promising that to you, please press the mute button. No one knows. Uh, historically, you can look at the data. Historically, the trends are clear. The gold price does historically has risen over time, but no one can tell you, you know, where it's going to move tomorrow, much less the next five minutes. But what we've built a business around is building vehicles that deliver you a return on your ounces and that's those are things that we can control so that's that's what we that's what we offer and um, that's the promise that we make to our clients this is really powerful and i feel like i'm getting i have the scope and sequence of of the process conscious investor i hope you i hope you're going to need to listen to this again more than likely i'm just letting <laughs> you know I, i've been exposed to this already and now i'm like okay we're getting there i'm like i get it what's interesting to me is that i i know i have lots of investor friends who love to have precious metals but those precious metals are sitting in a vault, not earning anything at all to our previous point when we first began this conversation. And so, um, and there are storage fees. There are also, there's a lot going on, but to be able to put your actual gold, which people want as that hedge in life as part of the protection in their portfolio and send it off, they can send it off. And now they're going to actually grow that gold. It's actually going to have, I always say in investing that we make money babies. And so this is going to make gold babies. Like that's phenomenal. We do need to wrap this up with a question that's really important. Somebody decides they want to transition out. This has been a great relationship. We really appreciate working with you. Um, we've enjoyed this but we've decided we're going to go finish the castle we've built and we're going to put gold leaves on the dome, you know? <laughs> like, so we need all of our gold back. What does that look like? Yes, yes, great question. I'm glad you brought that up. So again, we, we, we try and make everything easy, whether it's, it's coming into our program and also exiting the program. So we, we, you know, we, we make it as simple as possible. It's just a one-page form where you indicate your intention to withdraw your metal. And it's, it's funny you mentioned about, you know, gold leaves on the castle. You can take your gold home, right? So you can actually request to have your physical gold shipped back to you. Uh, you would just need to indicate what, you know, and, and what form or what products you want to receive, whether it's coins or bars. You can also just sell the gold for dollars and we will wire you those funds to your bank account. That's also an option. But, uh, yeah, one page form. It, it um, you know, goes through our internal processes to, to typically gets executed in one to two weeks. The only qualifier I would add is if you're actively in a lease, right? If you have gold in your account, that's not in a lease, that that metal you can withdraw immediately. If you have gold that's actively in a lease, mm -hmm. 
you you are you know you are obligated to wait until that lease matures right so just like if you're you know in a in a if i was leasing an apartment from you and i signed a 12 month lease term and i said oops you know sorry julie but i'm out of here in 6 months you'd be like oh well hold on a second <laughs> you know we we need to we you know this 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 isn't uh you know this is not what you signed you know this is not what you obligate yourself to similarly here right because we're lease we're promising to the company that they have this metal to use so if you want to withdraw that metal prior to the end of term um this is how we handle that letter of the law you're obligated to stay into the lease until until maturity until duration spirit of the law we try and accommodate those requests uh, on a best efforts basis. And typically we are able to accommodate them. We understand that life happens. Maybe you have a liquidity need. Maybe you need to access that gold for some kind of emergency situation. We get it. So we do try and accommodate those requests. And the, the really the way we're able to accommodate them is because we have other clients who are very willing to take that, that person's spot in the lease. So um, best efforts basis, if you need it immediately, otherwise, wait till maturity and you can access it and, and withdraw it and receive it to the location that you specify, no problem. That is really interesting. And in Conscious Investor, you and I know it's critical that you always have an exit plan in mind. Doesn't mean that you are, hey, I'm, I'm doing this at X point. You don't, but you just, you always wanna know what, what is the exit to whatever it is I'm starting. Cause it's easy to get so excited. I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm like, oh gosh, man, maybe I should take some of my Bitcoin and send it over to monetary metals, metals you know? <laughs> and so, um, you know, it's, it's just interesting and we can get excited about something and wanna jump into it, but we always need to understand and be educated on the process and understand start to finish, what does this process look like? So. Um, you know, this has been absolutely phenomenal, Dixon. I'm so grateful for your time. I imagine that there's some, there, the conscious investor is interested in learning more. So what are the best ways to go about learning more? Should they reach out to you? Do they go to the website? Tell us the, tell us what to do. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, all of the above, you can, you can go to our website. There's a lot of information there. Uh, you can also, we have a pretty active YouTube channel. So you can um, visit our YouTube channel. I'll, I'll give you those handles real quick. The website is monetary-metals.com. That's metals, plural. And then our YouTube channel, you should be able to just type in monetary metals and we will come up. Lastly, you'd be, um, I'm happy to leave you with my, uh, my personal email address, which is just my first name, Dixon, D-I-C-K-S-O-N at monetary-metals.com. I'd be happy to to personally speak with you and, and answer any questions you have. I'm, just, I'm so grateful. This has been a lot of fun. Um, it's been a great conversation. I have learned a ton and I appreciate, I always love learning new things. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure, Julie. Thank you for having me. And conscious investor, don't be a stranger. If this is fascinating you the way it fascinated me, then head on over to whatever whatever of your choice. You have a few different ways that you can learn more. Dixon is clearly a very kind person, so don't hesitate to reach out you know, directly to him. And in the meantime, remember that adventure belongs on the trail, not in our advanced investing and not in our personal lives. So if you're looking to take your first or next step in your investing in real estate, not monetary metals, because I'm not going to speak to that. We can already tell which direction that would go. <laughs> but if you would like to discuss your real estate investing goals and strategies and see what Three Keys Investments has to offer you, then please head on down to the show notes, schedule time for us to chat. And if you're feeling stuck or if you feel like you're not reaching your full potential and you want to maximize that and really have that fulfillment and satisfaction in life, again, go down to the show notes, schedule some, some time, let's talk. I may or may not have a coaching spot available at any given time um, because I don't know when you're listening to this. So don't hesitate to reach out in, in for anything at all. Until next time, cheers to health, mindset, and wealth. Bye.